Test one, two, one, two. Test one, two, one, two. Revere TV. Good evening. Welcome to the Revere Board of Appeals meeting. I would ask that we please stand and salute the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call of the members, Mr. Lemina. Here. Here, Mr. Lopes. Here, Here Mr. O'Brien. Here. Here, Mr. Pelton. Here, Here and Chairman Tucker. Here. Here at quorum is present. <coughs> First application is A2313. This is continued from April 26th of 23. Agildo Lemus de Silva, 49 Rose Street. Requesting a variance with respect to no accessory structure may be located within the required side yard setback and within two feet of the rear property line and shall not cover more than 10% of the rear yard in the RB district to enable the appellant to construct a 20 foot by 22 foot gazebo with an outdoor kitchen at 49 Rose Street. Please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Press the button one time. There you go. My name is Agil Da Silva uh, from 49 Rose Street, Revere. Okay. Seeing that this is a continuation, I would have to ask if there's any other proponents, anyone in favor? Seeing in here and not all close that side of the hearing, are there any opponents? I did speak to the ward counselor and he is opposed to this. Um, so we want that placed on record. Are there anyone else to, wishes to speak on this matter? Seeing and hearing none. I would ask any of the members wish to speak. Have you talked to the building inspector? You guys come up with a, some kind of a compromise so you don't have to tear down this whole thing, get it uh, legalized? He's going to help me in the English. You guys going to pull the permits and. They will tell us if we're still called getting the building inspector. Okay, speak into the microphone, please. Está perguntando se alguém. Se vocês conversaram com o Bill do Inspector, só para ter uma, uma ideia. Só foi com, com o vereador, né? Fico aqui conversando. Yeah, they have talked to, you know, someone in the city to try to bring some kind of solution for maybe try to, you know, pull a permit and, you know, do all the construction according to the codes. Right, right. I think that would be better than tearing it down and starting yeah, over yeah. again. It's unfortunate that he built it without a permit, but maybe you guys can come up it with is, a resolution. It is, you know, someone advised them to, you know, trying to have, or even engineer or an architect to make sure, I believe the food ends to be in the right, right, right place. Right. And maybe, you know, do everything according to the code. Right, right, okay. They're working on that. Okay. I'm willing, I'm willing to table it, everybody's. Uh... It, I would ask them to withdraw. There's no table, and they got to move the foundation, so they do have to tear it down, according to the building department. It, the structure would have to come down. So I have a motion on the floor that um, this be denied. I would ask for a roll call, please. They talk, excuse me, sir. Uh, it's, there's a motion on the floor, sir. You can talk to the building department after. As far as what we have to vote on, it's, it's, there's a motion on the floor to deny it. Shall the Zoning Board of Appeals grant the relief requested? Mr. Lemina? Yes. Yes, Mr. Lopes? Yes. Yes, Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Yes, Mr. Pelton? Yes. Yes, and Chairman Tucker? No. No, the variance has been granted. 
Next calendar item number. Next calendar item number is A2314. You, okay, you can wait for a letter within 30 days from the city clerk's office. All right. Next application is A2314, 1 Revere Beach Boulevard, LLC, 544 Salem Street, Wakefield, Mass, requesting several variances to enable the appellant to construct a six level mixed use 35 unit building to adjoin the pre existing apartment building at 1 Revere Beach Boulevard. Before we start this, there's a lengthy agenda tonight, so I'm going to ask for presentations to be no more than five minutes, and any proponents or um, proponents will be at three minutes. Thank so. you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Joseph Cotogio, 1 Sprague Street, Revere, representing the applicant, 1 Revere Beach Boulevard, LLC. Uh, the um, applicant is seeking to uh, construct a uh, building that will house 33 residential and one or two um, commercial units, uh, depending on the uh, uh, configuration of the, the lessee. Uh, the property that it sits on is approximately 23,761 square feet with borders on both Revere Beach Boulevard and Ocean Avenue. The lot is uniquely shaped with the smaller width distances to the northerly lot line uh, than that from the southerly lot line, creating somewhat of a funnel shape on the lot. The lot is also uh, subject to a distinct and severe downward slope running off of Revere Beach Boulevard towards the Ocean Avenue line, uh, and is also subject to a pre-existing six-story multi-unit apartment building with off-street parking. Uh, the shape of the lot and land restrictions limit the building area and require the petitioner to seek out and select the best options for themselves, the city, and the immediate neighborhood. Options to build up on the existing building were negated in favor of this overall preferable proposal. The parcel also lies within a 100-foot buffer zone of a coastal beach, which places the project under the further jurisdiction of the Revere Conservation Commission. The petitioner will apply to and comply with every requirement of the Conservation Commission upon, upon approval here. The parcel lies within a flood zone, according to the recorded flood maps. Due to these factors, uh, there cannot be compliance with the zoning requirements. It is therefore necessary for the petitioner to bring this application. The applicant is seeking approval for the construction of a six-story mixed-use structure with parking under that will match and sit aside the existing building. The proposed structure will only slightly exceed in height the existing building. The slight increase in height is due to minimal increases in, the, uh, in each floor size, but the overall number of floors will be the same, and this proposal does not require a height variance. Uh, the structure will hold 33 proposed residential units, mostly one bedroom, and a commercial area that can house one or two commercial endeavors. Uh, it's the hope of the petitioner that the commercial spaces houses a market or a market type uh, uh, commercial um, business and not necessarily a restaurant. There are a number of restaurants already in the area. We think a market, um, the food market will better serve not only the, the building itself but the surrounding area. Um, and the uh, extensive foot traffic that, that's there. Uh, the proposal comes with 29 exclusive parking spaces. The 29 spaces are exclusive of all the required parking spaces for the existing building, which will not be touched um, by this proposal. The parking spaces established for the existing building um, are not included in this application. There will be no other use of any of the spaces designated, either for the existing building or the proposal, other than for parking, for the residents. Um, I know there was some question about that, but that uh, can certainly be a restriction or requirement of the approval. Uh, the project is similar in nature to many other mixed-use developments that we have seen on Revere Beach and over, uh, Revere Beach Boulevard and Ocean Avenue, and will provide a much-needed upgrade to the existing location and will serve also to better uh, revitalize the Revere Beach neighborhood. Many of the prior approval, similar mixed-use developments have been completed with no open area at all, our uh, proposal will still have front, back, and side open areas uh, available. The project represents a significant improvement over the current condition and remains in harmony with the neighborhood development. The requested dimensional and parking relief is reasonable and necessary given the restrictions of the lot, the existing building, and the zoning ordinances. The proposal will provide needed updated housing. The development will also be aided by its Proximity to the MBTA blue line, which lies within uh, short walking distance. This proximity will allow a number of the units to be occupied without the need for parking. 
It is uh, the belief of the petitioner that the number of spaces provided will be sufficient to meet the limited needs of the occupant. There will be similar, uh, this will be similar to the limited need for parking for the commercial space. The project will require significant uh, investment by the petitioner and not only, to not only meet the requirements of the building department, but the fire department, the board of health, and also the conservation commission. Given the unique shape and condition of the parcel, the options available by right to, to the petitioner would result in severe financial hardship. Options to work above the existing building were not feasible to the petitioner, not practical to the city, and not desirable to the neighborhood. The little enforcement of the zoning ordinances would result in severe financial hardship. Uh, we do have uh, a rendering. Uh, we show the proposed building as it would sit on the lot. We also have submitted uh, a parking scheme. Uh, we have one that's color coded here to confirm that the red spaces designated all belong to the applicant uh, will remain with the existing building. That would be the sufficient enough parking for the existing building. The yellow spaces are for the proposed development and where the parking variance is needed. 29 spaces for the 33 residential units. Um, We're uh, available for questions, should there be any. Uh, a developer, a builder is here, our architect is here, um, and uh, we would request approval of the application by the board, and we thank you for your time. Okay, seeing that it's a public hearing, I'll ask if there's any proponents. Anyone in favor? Seeing and hearing, and I'll close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Please step up to the microphone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members. My name's Tom Ellsworth. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Marcus, Rico, Emmer, and Brooks, and tonight I'm here on behalf of our clients, the trustees of Surfside Condominium, that's the condominium located across the street from the project at 10 Ocean Boulevard, or 10 Ocean Avenue. And many of the residents of, of, of that complex have joined us tonight. And you're going to hear from some of them about their concerns about some impacts about, uh, from this project. I'm here to talk about something else. And it's a very specific legal point, a very narrow legal point, but it's a threshold legal point, And that is the idea of hardship. This application should be denied because the, 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 uh, the applicant has not demonstrated hardship. Without hardship, nothing else matters. All of the other facts and issues that you're going to hear about don't mean anything without meeting the threshold issue of hardship. To obtain a hardship, or to obtain a variance, to prove hardship, the applicant has to demonstrate that there are circumstances related to soil conditions, shape, or topography of the land or structures that result in the hardship. That's in the statute, Chapter 40A, Section 10, and it's also mirrored in your local zoning ordinance. Those are the requirements. The hardship has to arise from soil conditions, shape, or, topo or topography of the land or structures. Now, what this applicant says is, I've got a building on this lot already, and I've got some open space. I can't build on the open space without a variance because there's already a building there. That's not a ground for a variance. If that were grounds for a variance, every lot owner in the Commonwealth could say, I'm entitled to a variance because I've got, already got a structure there and I've got some open space that, by the way, your ordinance is designed to protect. But because I already have a building, now I want a variance to expand and to have more nonconformities with a new building in this case. That's not, not only is that not a basis for hardship under the statute and your ordinance, it's directly contrary to the purpose of your ordinance which is designed to protect the open space. That's the point of it. There's no, as a lawyer, I, I guess I have, you know, the disadvantage of having to read a lot of cases about this issue. There's no such thing as a variance right created because there's open space that's protected by an ordinance due to the fact that there's already an existing building. So, uh, so that's, that's number one. Number two, the applicant says that uh, the applicant says that the variances are needed to allow the owner 
to achieve, it says in the application, the best and highest use of the land. And we heard council tonight say that it would be a severe financial hardship to the owner without the variance. But that's, again, that's not talking about the lot. The lot has a reasonable use, and that's what the courts look to. It has one. It's got an apartment building that's operating. What he's saying is it'll be a financial hardship if you don't give them a variance to develop the open space. But that's not what, a, that's not what the variance is intended to do. He's got a reasonable use. They've got an apartment building already operating on the site. There's just one case, and I'll just, I'll just two small quotes from a case I like to cite when I, when I cite decisions on this issue. It's a Massachusetts Appeals Court case from 2004, McGee versus Board of Appeal of Boston. Two things that I like from that decision. One, the court says an undersized lot is not a basis for a variance. And two, quote, an inability to maximize the potential of a parcel of land is not a hardship within the meaning of the zoning law. So it's best and highest use is not the standard for a variance. Um, also, I noted in the application that the applicant says that, that one, one reason for the variance is, is that it would help satisfy uh, housing need in the community. And, and although we applaud that goal, that is also not a, a basis for a variance. Housing need is not part of hardship. So that's, what I, that's the point I wanted to mention. And just is that, that just because you have open space doesn't mean that you get a variance. The applicant hasn't demonstrated anything about the, the shape of the lot or the topography or the shape of the building that puts this in a special circumstance that would warrant a variance. And we would, on behalf of my clients, we would urge the board to vote tonight, tonight and, and deny this application. Thank you. Thank you. I, there, I do see a lot of people in the audience from the um, condominium itself. Is there a representative from the condominium association that's going to speak on their behalf and then they can raise their hands and we can count how many people are in the audience, if that's what you wish? So if you don't mind, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Uh, hello, my name is Ryan Stewart. I live at 10 Ocean Avenue, Unit 407 in Revere, Massachusetts, Surfside Lofts. I want to say that me and my partner moved here in 2016 and we fell in love with Revere when we were touring Boston for a place to live and uh, we decided to move here and I would say that we did that before Revere was officially cool again um, and so we are also joined by some of our neighbors and I'd like them to raise their hands if they're present today. What did you get? Oh, 24. It's a total, yeah. 24. And, and many of them are longtime residents who have also bought into the promise of living on Revere Beach. Um, I'm here to summarize some of the concerns we sent in the letter the other day on behalf of all the owners. Uh, I want to say that many of us are generally pro-development. We have really enjoyed seeing the improvements to Revere Beach over the past few years, the additions of the nice restaurants, the revitalization of Shirley Avenue, um, the, the development going on around Wonderland. We are patrons of those businesses. We love it. Um, we also understand that in order to give a little progress and development in Revere, we have to give a little. And that's the reason that you haven't seen many of us here before at the ZBA um, opposing a lot of these projects. And a really good case in point is uh, the Ryder and the 90 Ocean buildings. Uh, those had a material impact on our building. And in those, session, in those occasions, the, uh, the developers of those projects reached out to us proactively before they submitted the application to hear our concerns, to open a dialogue, and we came to an agreement. We came to mutual concessions, mutual mitigation agreements, and ultimately they obtained our buy-in, and those projects went ahead. And I would say we enjoy a very cordial relationship with Ryder and 90 Ocean today, and many of us look at it as a very positive addition to the neighborhood. However, in this case, we have not been contacted at all. Um, the owner of the building or the developer never reached out to us a, to inform us about a project. The first official notification we got was this abutters notice. We had heard rumors back in fall about a potential project. We reached out to their on-site management. They told us they knew nothing. And so 
We have no choice to outright oppose this application tonight because we have no, no other mechanism to make sure that our voices are heard and our concerns are addressed. I will also add um, that the water main, uh, that we have concerns about the impact to the water infrastructure as well as the infrastructure in general, which uh, if we allow two other people to speak on behalf of the owners, that would be great. But more particularly, the water main breaks. We've had three in the last one and a half years. Um, and those started with the Ryder and 90 Ocean units coming online. And when we've talked to the people making the repairs, who are awesome, by the way, out there at 6 a.m. getting it fixed, very dedicated individuals, um, they told us that the additional strain on the pipes, and they're very old, and they just can't keep up with it. So we are concerned that the addition of additional units in that general vicinity will put additional loads on the water pipes and will continue to suffer outages of the water. I would like to finally say that I heard um, the, the developers say that uh, you know, there's a severe housing crisis in Revere and that these 36 units are going to tip the balance. And I would humbly submit that with the hundreds and hundreds of apartment buildings that are coming online across the beach and then soon in Suffolk Downs, I don't think that this building alone is going to solve the housing crisis. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Are there any other proponents that wish to speak? Pro, proponents. I mean, I'm sorry, opponents. There were no proponents. Thank you. Uh, my name is Laura Libby. I also live at 10 Ocean Ave, uh, Unit 410. Um, I'm a board member, and I've sat on planning conservation boards before, so I know the pain of having to go through all this. And you're accustomed to seeing some of these developers and lawyers, but you're, you're only seeing us once every maybe ever, right? So I apologize in advance for all of our noise. Um, as Ryan said, we do like the revitalization of the beach. We don't think the developer is acting in good faith. We are worried about our health and safety and environmental impacts. We're concerned about infrastructure's capacity to handle more development. And my new point <laughs> is that um, many owners purchased our homes knowing what the zoning was. And the zoning hasn't changed since we moved there. We also knew that the lot was basically un already developed. There's no expectation that we ever would have thought that something would come along and, and fill up more of that space. Um, we feel like that that lot can't support further development. And anyone who did their homework also knew about lot 6A, and they knew that that lot was only used for parking and that it would only be, and it would not be used to, um, to, sorry, uh, against the FAR calculation, the FAR calculation. And for those reasons, we feel like that this is also not, should not be um, approved. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any other opponents that wish to speak? We did count 24 people, so if you'd like to get up and speak, by all means, please do so. Uh, I'd just like to point out, um, sorry, your name and address for the record, My name please. is Jeffrey Walker, 10 Ocean Avenue, uh, 407. Um, I am on the board as well. Um, and I'd just like to point out, so we have, we have really big concerns about, about pollution, uh, environmental pollution, trash, more trash, more people. Uh, indoor pollution, more dust coming our way, noise and light pollution, air and ground pollution, hazardous waste, including possible asbestos. We don't really know what's in that building. It's from the 60s, maybe, 60s or 70s. Uh, cement dust, shadow effects to the east and west. And, and these pollutions will directly affect not just us, not just us residents, not just us owners, uh, our pets, uh, mass residents coming out to enjoy the beach that's right on the circle, and that's, that's right where... You know, people drive in to go to the beach. And the piping plover uh, population was nest, nest directly in front of that parcel. <clears throat> um, and they're a federally protected and endangered shorebird. And the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service restricts activity that generates loud sound within, within 1,000 meters of a nest. Uh, we don't know really what pollutants, pollutants are going to be stirred up with this project. So we're, we're just concerned for our safety and, and the shorebirds. Thank you. Any other opponents? Seeing in here, and then I'll close that side of the hearing. Any members wish to speak? Okay, I do have a question concerning 
the actual deed um, that going back this property when it was being looked at with, for riders and prior to that, the parking lot that's um, adjacent to that that was sold by DCR to the yes. former owner had a deed restriction yes. on that that said you cannot increase far or you have to give that back to the DCR, the lot back to the DCR. I'm not a lawyer, but that's what I'm reading. Just, so I'd like to find out why are you here tonight if that okay. deed restriction is is for, on the, the deed. In, in response, it doesn't say we have to give the land back. Just for clarification, it says that the state could decide to take it back. Okay, but uh, that distinction aside, we are not utilizing those lots at all. That's why we specified, and that's on this area here. This area and the parking spaces included are not part of the proposal, not part of the, it doesn't, none of the structure that we're proposing sits on that lot, and all of those spaces that were designated for the existing building will remain with the existing building. That was a question that came up prior to site plan review. We reviewed it with the city solicitor. I, I would understand if the board itself wants to get car, uh, correspondence, a confirmation rather from the city solicitor, we would be obviously fine with that. Um, uh, and we did uh, present information and they agreed and understood. They asked for an opinion letter I provided. So it is our opinion that those, that, that restriction has not been violated and won't be violated by the by an approval of the variances or by the construction that's proposed. Also, for clarification, there was concern over the water main. Uh, we did speak with engineering about the um, uh, at site plan review. They did indicate that they would require an upgrade to the water main uh, if this were to go forward, and obviously we would comply with that. So we would actually be uh, repairing and benefiting the uh, any questions or concerns with the water main. We also met with the city uh, councilor in this ward prior to meeting here. Uh, it was our understanding that she went on, on you know, uh, behalf and spoke with the residents there, uh, did not come back with a request for a, a, a meeting, um, indicated her position at that point, um, and was also the catalyst for suggesting that we use the uh, commercial space for a market instead of a restaurant, which we uh, uh, appreciated and agreed with. Um, so there was some correspondence. Okay. Now, there was one other question that was brought up to me, and that's going back, God rest his soul, with Mr. Festa. Yes. That when the rider was acquired, that there, I believe, is 25 spaces on the parcel in the back that is for use for Atlantic Towers. And yes. That's part of a, that's noted in a deed and everything. Yes. That will remain in, intact? All the spaces that are required for Atlantic Towers to, to, to buy your ordinances are assigned to Atlantic Towers and will remain with Atlantic Towers. No parking variance is needed for the existing building. All 52 units, 51 units, 51 units have the required parking. They're all residential units. There's no commercial. And um, outside of this development, we are also upgrading all of the units in Atlantic Towers. Um, so the concern about toxins and, and uh, the, uh, pollution coming from the building, they're all being taken care of with the, the uh, uh, authorization and um, supervision of the city and uh, all its departments. Okay, but I don't think my question was answered. I'm sorry. The 25 spaces that are on the parcel behind that, will they remain in place exclusive use for Atlantic Towers? Yes. Okay. All the That's required spaces, yes. Okay. We have 29 spaces that we're proposing that will be used exclusively for the 33 units. Okay. Now, um, You've mailed out the abutters list, and in speaking to people at DCR, could you tell me where that went? Because no one seems to know that they of of this parcel being developed at this time. I, I don't do the, the mailings. I, I don't know. I just obtained the abutters list from the assessor's office and presented it to the Okay, but did you have clerk. communications with DCR over this at all? They, no, they didn't correspond okay. with us at all. And again, it's our opinion that we're not violating that in any way. So it was returned to something. Okay. Um, 
seeing that there's a this ambiguity and and speaking to the city solicitor, he's he's not he didn't see much have much knowledge on this other than it was discussed with Frank Stringy. So I would respectfully request that this be continued so it could go in front of the city solicitor for a legal opinion regarding this the deed restriction. Um, because it is interpreted that the, if the FAR of the building itself is increased, that DCR could possibly take that parking lot away. So I am concerned about that. Uh, I don't want to vote on anything until we have some clarification from the city solicitor. So I would ask if we can request a continuation until we get a legal opinion from the city solicitor. Our next meeting will be... June 28th at 5 p.m. So could I ask for a roll call, please? Shall this matter be continued to the meeting, to the next UBA meeting of June 28th? <clears throat> Mr. Lemina? Yes. yes. Mr. Lopes? Yes. yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Yes. Mr. Pelton? Yes. Yes. And Chairman Tucker? Yes. Yes, this matter will be continued. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll have a two-minute recess if people wish to exit. If you're going to stay, then that's fine, but I just can't have you all exiting while we're trying to run a meeting. So a two-minute recess. We're back in session. Next application is A2315, Albiero Lopera, 29 Broad Sound Avenue, requesting variances of the revised ordinances of the City of Revere relative to the 40 feet frontage requirement for a qualified lot within the HD zone and parking requirements for existing lots in the HD overlay zone to enable the appellant to construct a single family dwelling on lot C Hitchborn Street which is deemed unbuildable. The existing developed lot, lot B at 82 Hitchborn Street, cannot accommodate four off-street parking spaces as required by the zoning ordinances, so the adjacent vacant lot, lot C Hitchborn Street, is necessary to meet the parking requirements of the developed lot. Just for the record. There you go. Good afternoon. My name is Alberto Lopera. Um, from here, from Rivia, right? So, 
the, um, the only thing I ask in here is for two variants. One of them, to be, to be a single family. One of them is um, the front footage are a lot. It's 37 feet and requires 40, 40 feet. And the other variance is the, uh, it's a two family spa for existing uh, two family home. So uh, we're supposed to have, they're supposed to have four. So for a single family, we'll be have to require two parking to meet all the requirements. Okay, seeing that it's a public hearing, I will ask if there's any proponents, anyone in favor? Seeing it. Proponent in favor. The seeing owner. and hearing. The owner, the owner of the lot. I don't see anybody getting up to the microphone, sir. If they want to come up and speak, please invite them up here. As a proponent, does anyone wish to speak? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Are there any opponents? Anyone opposed? Please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. If someone is going to speak for all of the individuals, I would ask someone to come up and then we can do a count of hands. If you wish, or you can all speak by yourselves. Please press the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Good evening. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing today? Um, I'm here because uh, I, uh, they try... Uh, your name and address for the record, okay. please. My name is uh, Walter Tamayo. I'm from 92 Hillsborough Street in Riviera. I'm a neighbor for like uh, 12 years in this area, and um, I'm here to represent all the all my neighbors around. You know, so um, they just uh, try building this house in an uh, unbuildable property. In number one, number two, they have six parking spots right now. Now they're gonna go to four. One of the issues. We have a building across the street in Tim Franklin Street. It's a 36 units building in there. We, uh, they built in this building for like three, four years already. We have silica problems up there, uh, no dust control and all in that building. Um, those one of the issues, all right? When, and another issue is we don't have any parking in the street because people from, uh, Who's the street down below? I forget the name. Uh, Chile Ave. We have people from Chile Ave come and parking in uh, Hillsborough Street. Every single day we fly up there, we parking. Especially when, uh, when we have a snow and the storm days, we don't have no parking at all. These 36 units across the street from 92 Hillsborough, it's only 24 they have parking in the building. The other 12, they have to park in the street because they don't have enough parking in, in there, all right? And another thing, they, uh, these people get survey up there to market up the area. They market up the area five feet from the property line, and they only have like 2.5 and a half inches from the property line. That's, that's the only thing I can speak up. Thank you. Thank you. Are you speaking on the behalf of the other people? If they want to raise their hands, we'll count them. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine, ten. Ten people. Okay, is there any other opponents that wish to speak? Please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. My name is Marianne Ortiz, and I live at 96 Hitchborn Street. Um, I'm opposing because of the parking space as well, because um, during snow, snow removal and emergency snow removal, we only can park on the left side of the street. As if you're coming up on the one way, everyone has to park on the left side and we fight for parking space. We have to get up there early and then people just go ahead, the plow comes up and plows everyone in and then we have to get up again. And then there's no parking, there's, we're not allowed to have any spaces. Across from 82 Hitchborn Street, that whole side there is um, not allowed to ta take as parking spaces or anything like that. And like he stated, the building across the street already has all those units in there. And if anyone there doubles up on two parking spaces for them, one of them is going to be parking outside of the building, in the street. So they don't have enough parking space already. People come from Franklin Street, from um, Thornton Street, three, st um, three streets over, 
always parking. If their alarms go off, they go off, and there's no way of finding who lives there or who owns the car to go ahead and tell them, hey, you know, your alarm is going off because there's so many people coming up the street to park. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing in here, not, oh. Councilor Novoselsky, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, I actually uh, didn't like the size of the lot anyways. And, you know, Al's a nice guy. I got all good feelings from other people that supported him. But I felt the lot is very small and it's squeezing it in. Uh, the lot next, the house next door at, I believe, uh, 82, uh, uses part of that property for parking. And they're using it for four spaces now, but when they reduce it, they'll actually lose the two spaces which are, are actually on that, the requested property. Uh, and then when it goes down to the old, old lines, line, they actually lose a space in the back the way the property line goes through the parking space. So technically, they only have one, le they will end up with one legal uh, parking space. Uh, it is a lot, I agree with the folks. Parking is bad everywhere, and I know what they're talking about. Um, fortunately, the uh, apartment building, which is not part of this project, of course, uh, will not receive any uh, permit parking stickers for those folks to park on the street. So they will be restricted on the number of cars they have in that building, even though there may be less of how many apartments there are. So, you know, I have to go against this. You know, again, you know, I met with the folks. I called for a neighborhood meeting. Unfortunately, it was a long weekend, and a lot of people went away for the weekend. Uh, and But I did receive at least five or six phone calls against it, you know, from all the neighboring houses and streets. So, I'm, you know, I have to go against this and uh, request that you deny it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to make a motion to deny this based on the findings of the ZBA. And the ZBA finds that the primary intent and purpose of conditions of a HD zone is to make sure that the existing structure within the HD Z zone conforms to the parking requirement standards before any qualified lot is deemed buildable. The existing developed lot, lot B, at 82 Hitsborn Street does not meet the required number of off-street parking, so the vacant lot, Lot C, Hitsborn Street, is considered necessarily for the parking of the developed lot and is deemed non-buildable. Additionally, the property owner is not entitled to a variance where the hardship arises solely from the fact that the lot is too small to qualify as a buildable lot under the zoning ordinance. The granting of this variance would nullify and substantially degrade from the intent and purpose of the highway business zone, the highway district zone. So I would ask for a roll call to deny. Could you please state that a yes vote would be to approve, a no vote would be to deny? Board members, a yes vote would indicate that you want the variance to be granted. A no vote is voting against the variance, okay? So the Zoning Board of Appeals grant I get a question first of all. If he proposed a single family, would the lot size be appropriate? No. It I is a proposed single a, family. A two family. No, it's a single it's a family single. home. Okay. Single. single family. Okay. Okay. Shall the Zoning Board of Appeals grant the relief requested? Mr. Lemina? No. No, Mr. Lopes? <clears throat> no, Mr. O'Brien? No. No, Mr. Pelton? No. No, and Chairman Tucker? No. No, the variance has been denied. Next application is A2316, Washington Sherman LLC, 9 South Street, Chestnut Hill, Mass requesting a six-month extension of the one-year exercise period from the Zoning Board of Appeals associated with the granted variance 
variances of A2213 to enable the appellant to construct a four-story building containing 30 residential units on the property known and numbered as 810 Washington Avenue. Good evening. Name and address for the record, please. Daniel Sibber, 9th South Street in Brookline. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, we're here today just uh, to request a six-month extension of the variance that was granted uh, back in June of last year. Um, we are current, we, we didn't close on this property until December. Since then, we've been expeditiously working uh, with the city to get this project off the ground. We are currently demolishing the building uh, this week, actually. Um, we've uh, completed our construction drawings. Uh, the city will not issue our building permit, thereby triggering uh, the exercise of the variances until uh, the building has been demolished and they can inspect the demolition. <clears throat> so uh, we expect that that will happen in the coming weeks, but just as a, a check on who knows what could occur over the next few weeks between now and June 21st, we thought it would be prudent to request this extension one time uh, just to make sure that uh, we've got ourselves covered and that if we do uh, not receive the building permit before June 21st, that the variances don't lapse. So, happy to answer any questions. Very well said. Any members wish to speak on this? It's just a six-month extension, can't go beyond that, so it's basically a simple thing. Any other proponents? Any other proponents? Seeing and hearing all close outside of the hearing. Any opponents? Anyone opposed? Seeing and hearing all close that side of the hearing, I would ask for a motion to approve. Roll call. Shall the Zoning Board of Appeals grant a six-month extension to the variances granted under A2213? Mr. Lemina? Yes. Yes, Mr. Lopes? Yes. Yes, Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Yes, Mr. Pelton? Yes. Yes, and Chairman Tucker? Yes. Yes, the time extension has been granted. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Application A2317, Eastern Equity Partners, LLC, 1040 to 1048 North Shore Road, requesting multiple variances to enable the appellant to construct a five-story mixed-use building with 32 residential units and one commercial unit at 1485 North Shore Road. Uh, good evening, Chairman and members of the board. My name is Nancy O'Neill, and I am an attorney located at 14 Proctor Avenue. And I am here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Eastern Equity Partners, LLC, and I am joined here tonight by Jamie Russo of Eastern Equity Partners. Uh, so this proposal is for the construction of a approximately 21,000 square foot mixed use building at 1485 North Shore Road. So the building will contain one ground floor commercial unit and 32 residential <coughs> units uh, to include 12 one bedroom units and 20 studio units averaging around 400 to 450 square feet. So with units at that size, we are projecting that single people will likely be living in these units. Uh, and this building is designed as a commuter building or a transit-oriented development. Uh, so what this means is that the people in this building would be taking the train to work or school in Boston. So the 1485 North Shore Road property which you can see here is about 350 feet or a one minute walk from the Rivera Beach MBTA station uh, which is approximately uh, right there. Um, so for this reason, minimal parking is planned for this building. So the residents would be taking the train. They would not be having cars. There would be restrictions in the leases for this building that would preclude the residents from having cars. Uh, Eastern Equity Partners has developed and managed these types of buildings very successfully in the past. And among their Shirley, Shirley Avenue neighborhood properties, uh, they actually have excess parking spaces. And this is because the Shirley Avenue neighborhood is particularly well suited to a building like this. People are walking to local businesses for their day-to-day -day needs. 
There is high foot traffic in this neighborhood, and it is a very vibrant neighborhood. Um, for this reason, we are proposing a ground floor commercial unit, a small unit, which uh, would be around here, and it would be about 1,000 square feet um, on the first floor to be a low-impact retail or office use. And we are thinking that the two proposed parking spaces, which are located in that driveway portion of the building would be utilized by the operators of that business. Uh, so the residential use and the small business use would be replacing the current restaurant use. Um, so with this proposal, the goal is to have a less impactful use from the neighborhood than this restaurant use, which is uh, the Peter Super Beef restaurant. Um, and we know that many people are sad to see this restaurant go, but the owners are ready to retire. Um, and they actually approached uh, the applicant in relation to the development of this parcel. Um, so with the <coughs> use that we're proposing, there's going to be less of a traffic impact, as this is a very popular restaurant with cars coming in and out. Um, and we also hope to see an improvement in terms of noise, smell, and dumpster use. Um, the, this building, down the roof, there are fans. There are dumpsters located on the back residential property line. Um, so that will all be removed. The building would feature an internal trash room, um, so which alone is a large improvement uh, for that property and the surrounding neighborhood. Um, but overall, we are looking to replace this aging commercial building from the 1940s with a new modern building that would fit with the current state of that neighborhood, which as I mentioned is a walkable, vibrant neighborhood. Um, so this would be a safe building that is being constructed to 2023 fire and code standards, not 1943 fire and code standards. Um, we actually held a community meeting for this project. We're all present for in support uh, besides one person. Um, we see that there are people here tonight uh, who do not attend the meeting, um, and who did not contact us about the project. Uh, but this project, uh, it enjoys the support of the city and the ward councilor, who we have been happy to work with on various aspects of the building design. Um, so uh, we are happy to enjoy the support of both the city and the ward councilor, and we would respectfully request that the variance for the property are granted. Um, we are happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing that this is a public hearing, I'd ask for proponents. Does the ward councilor wish to speak? Kindly step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Ira Novoselsky, 53 D. Hone Street, Ward 2 Councilor. Um, Mr. Russo has been uh, doing a lot of construction on Shirley Avenue, and uh, Shirley Ave is the talk of the town. And it's all because of all the construction that he's done and the retail businesses he's developed and allowed to de be developed uh, on Shirley Ave. I know the height is c concerning to the neighbor, and uh, I love her. She's a great person. I try to talk to her, and, uh, you know, she's very adamantly against this. But, you know, it's... Uh, it's times like this that we have to open, open up a little and... Uh, you know, try and make things happen. I try to work with uh, the, the architect and develop it so the building is set back on the tops so it doesn't look like it's a five-story building straight up and down. There's a lot of bump outs all around. Uh, the trash is going to be contained inside the building, uh, emptied uh, maybe once or twice or even three times a week, depending on how much trash is de uh, developed uh, during that week. And um, there are two parking spaces for the commercial uh, space for offices. He wanted to do a restaurant. I told him I was absolutely against the restaurant. And I said, there's definitely parking. Uh, there was no parking in that neighborhood for a restaurant to, to, uh, to work, to, to, uh, for it to allow it to work. It's all uh, permit parking around there, residential only. And uh, very, very difficult for a retail spot with no parking on his space. Uh, so the two spaces are there are for the commercial space that's going to be in there for the uh, office space rather than retail. So it'll be, could be an accountant, it could be, uh, uh, it could be, uh, uh, could be a lawyer's office, you know, 
some, you know, something like that, but nothing where there's going to be a lot and lot of uh, people approaching to go in there. So uh, I'm for this, and uh, you know, I'm trying to make the area better. And you know, I know I've spoken to uh, Mr. Russo about it. And you know, if any of the opponents come up and they need anything that's going to be specific, right now the existing wall of the back of the building is is about. 18, 19 feet high. The elevation change down to the next building is low. So the building will be away from this line now, about 10 to 15 feet, you know, because of that parking area. So she won't have that wall straight up behind her and whatever's below on the elevation change, that'll be addressed and dressed up by the architect and the contractor when they go to develop it. So that's where we stand. I try to explain everything to you tonight Thank you. and where we've gone with this, and uh, we'll see if we can make it happen. Thank, Thank you. you. To the uh, attorney representing, I just want to make sure that um, we're clear on all of the standard restrictions from the Board of Appeals, Site Plan Review, and that there'll be no permitted parking or guest parking given by the city. So we will ask for those restrictions if this is approved. Right, right. Okay. We're fine with that. Thing. All righty. There... For the record, there is two other proponents from the City of Revere, the City Planner Tom Skorowski and Robert O'Brien. Are there any other proponents? Seeing it here, and I'll close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Anyone opposed? Please step up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. You have to push the button once. I just want to let um, the viewing audience as well as the audience in attendance, there is no Thank you. request for a height variance here. They can do the height that they're requesting as a matter of right. So there's nothing here that's in front of us regarding the height of the property. They can do the height as a matter of right. So they're not asking for a variance for height. Okay. I just want to make that clear. Good evening. Could you state your name Good and address evening. for the record, Hi. please? My name is Elena Fabiano. I own the home directly behind Pewdie Super Big. And I'm very heartbroken about this. I'm 84 years old. I'm living there 50 years. I have pictures to show he would block the sun and I would have no sun. And when the winter comes, with this, what they want to do, my house will freeze, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I have 108 signatures of people on Kimball Ave and B Street who are against it. We do not need a high-rise apartment. We're not in an area that this calls for high-rise apartment. Well, I have pictures to show where the sun comes in and where I lose. I cannot let this happen to me. I'm there 50 years, I'm a widow, and I'm not because I'm a widow, that's not important, that's needless to say. But I have pictures to show the sun, how it comes in. He wants to build, oh, he told people to tell me that the city of Revere and the Revere is all for him. Well, I think I should be heard. And I want to show, if I'm allowed, to show you the pictures of where the sun comes into my home. My tenants will lose the sun on their sun deck. My home is all lit up by the sun. And then when the holidays come, I want to be able to enjoy my home. After all, I worked hard for what I have. This is a Johnny come lately. Thank God he has what he has. God bless him. But I want to show you the difference. May I give you pictures? You can present them to the okay. clerk. All right. This is when my mother was alive, how much she enjoyed the picture. This is the sun deck, if you want to see. Here, here's the other one for you. This is the show if you want to give all five. That's where the sun comes in. Over here, here's two more stuff. So on this picture with the American flag, is that the back of their building? That's the back of their building. Yeah. So that's I'm um, directly behind. That but how wall. far from the from their from their building are you? Is your home? 
How far is your home from that well, building? Here it is, right here. I showed it. On the holidays when the sandcastles come in, I have a family that they come and enjoy it. Now, the grass area with these set of stairs is your property? Yeah, the grass. So that grass yeah. area is yours. So that's about, what, 20 feet, 25 feet from the yeah. wide of grass? Right. How, how wide is it then? Can you give me a guess, please? Oh, right. some of them are duplicates, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see all of these? I have 20, 108 signatures. Unfortunately, the 108 signatures, is it, you would have had to submit a week in advance, as it states in the, in our, you have to have them in advance so we could look at them and validate them. But I mean, nobody know. went to, 108 people, I don't believe, went to a community meeting opposing this. No. It, it, was there any opposition at the community meeting? There was one person? They had a community meeting. Two? On May 17th. There was nobody there. There was probably three or four people. Okay. Here, if you want these. Okay, are there any other opponents that wish to speak? Anyone else wish to speak? If, 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 you're an, if you live in the area and want to say something, you're welcome to do so. Just step no. up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. But this is my family. Oh, that's your family. Yeah. Okay. I have a couple of people that live near me. I don't know where. Her concern is, the, I'm her niece. My name is Josephine Wicks, and I live in there also. Her concern mainly is the wall and the air rights. Is, there's there no limits to air rights. As you just said, that they have they have a matter of right to build as, as tall as they're as going to because that's the ordinance that's in place. And that tiny lot, I mean, to have a building like that, that's that's a massive size building in that corner lot. Even the neighbors don't want it. Unless there's some. You know, she's concerned not just about the sunlight coming in, but that wall. What damage that might do to her property. But I don't want it. Anyway. Is there water going to come in from there and, and go into her property? <coughs> this is what, what our main concerns are. Well, those concerns can be addressed with the building department by all means. You, you, if they're building, you have the right to voice all your concerns to the building department. I don't think them building a wall is going to add any water onto your property. Gotcha, um, but I'm not a, I, I, that's my opinion. You, you get, we have a building department and right. the she site plan review that, now yeah. That wall. But, um, yeah, the, her con main concern is I just, the building itself. The building itself. And I guess it's too high. Most of the people on the street, oh, she's been going up and down the street getting signatures, but. She thought she could bring the signatures here tonight. We weren't aware that they had to be turned They are aware. Excuse me for interrupting you. Yeah, but they could have all submitted something weeks and weeks ago. This has been publicized for I over a month. I just got this notice. Excuse me for interrupting. I just got this notice May 10th for a meeting on May 17th. I have never been involved with this. I have never been informed. Who about you? I have never been informed of this. The only notice that we send out is the public hearing notice, and that you received. So what other notice are you referring to? You may be referring to another notice that you got for the public, for a community I meeting. I have everything that I got here. I got a witness. Is yeah, you, you got to... the second notice for a community Mr. meeting. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Yes. That for a community meeting. That's not the one that's from the, the Board of Appeals. Yes. That's when she should have brought the signatures and presented yes. them at the community meeting? No, oh, no, you should have given them to the city clerk's office. Okay, before yes. tonight's meeting. Now, has this gone to the MEPA office? To what? The MEPA office, it doesn't trigger any environmental This is the only thing I got. Okay. This is the only thing I got in the meal. It was on May 10th. 
on a the public hearing notice, you did that. You got another thing I for the. I went to the meeting that they had on yeah. North Shore Road. Nothing. I told yeah, that notice is for the public hearing. That didn't come May tenth. No, that that was the, the other notice you got. How this did you know about the community meeting? Well, I. I you must have got another notice for that. I have something already. Yeah. I got. Yeah, we only send the public hearing notice, not the not the public, well, not the community meeting notice. They do that. So is it too late for her to turn in? The petition that she has? It's how do we know they're valid? There's nothing for us to look at. Well, I mean, see, if they turn them in, it's, it was done underhanded. I've never gotten informed of any of these things. Ma'am, you just showed us the notice you got for the no, public that, hearing. That's for, right. No, you have you for have here. two different notices there. This is the only one. I'm looking at it. I no, looked no, at no, the no, public hearing notice. The, the neighbors were all upset that they didn't get a Only fire. property owners get the notice, not residents. If you are a resident of a building, it's the property owner who gets the notice, not the resident. Tenants no. don't get notices. No, but the neighbors down the street want to know why they didn't get a flyer. Pretend. They don't get a flyer. They get a public notice for with the 300 well, foot of budding got thing. It. That's what they said. The owners didn't get it. None of them. The butters to the abutters got notices. We have the we we the, they're sent out by the city. They're not sent out by uh, they're sent out. The, the abutters to the abutters notice that was sent out. Mm -hmm. no, I didn't so get is it. this final that this building is going through? It's it's not final yet, but okay. there's not a very, they're not requesting anything about height because they don't have to. They, wow. they the height is as a matter well, of right based on the zoning. Well. Not That's not something that happen. we can stop. I'm not going to let this happen. I lived there 50 years, and I've had it. I'm heartbroken. I sacrificed everything for my home. And then I have to hear this, you know, there's something I have to take care of. I only heard of one meeting at North Shore Road, and they gave me the wrong address. They said five Ma'am, that's a community meeting. That's not the public hearing here tonight. So that's, I have to that, go to that, was a, that was something that they, your ward counselor and the developer did that has nothing to do with this meeting here tonight. The public notice that was well, they given. Didn't, they didn't tell me. I would have been there. I'm not ignorant. You I, were there. You were at the community meeting, I was told. Am I, is that not correct? You didn't go to the. That is correct. Okay. Is there any other opponents? Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Nobody else? Is, is this the last meeting regarding this? Yes. Tonight will be the meeting. Tonight will be a decision being made. Well, I'm going to fight it somehow. I apologize, but it's not a height thing that they're, we're, that they're asking tonight. They're not asking for height because they have the right to build as a matter of right the height they're building. That's right. They don't okay. have the right to build. Is there any members that wish to speak on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, something to tell no. Height. Height in the sun. Yeah, but they can build up to 50 they, feet they in the GB district. 50 feet. We don't vote against because someone's sun is being taken away. Right. No, and it's not. It's. Well, we, we didn't you know, vote on I think it. Mr. Russo is a very reasonable man. We know that. He tells everybody to. Let me know that he's a powerful person. Well, and besides that, the City Hall likes bes what he does. besides that, and I'm sure, come winter time, if you need your driveway plowed, he's very reasonable, and I'm sure he'll do that for you. But we have to coexist somehow. You're going to live there for a long time. Somebody's going to build you. there. Somebody's going to build there, regardless if it's him or someone else. So it's better to come up with a nice compromise. This is a compromise? When the, when the roast beef place was put up, I'm sure Everybody there was opposition. The roast beef I'm sure there was opposition in the beginning. But look, they've been there almost 50 years. Right. And everybody ended up loving them. All my neighbors are going to miss right. them. Right. And you guys will learn to love them and live it's with them sad. the sad. same way. I'm not against Mr. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I'm saying that the roast beef place, it's sad it's that the gentleman Astodon. wants to retire. I love Bill beef roast beef. It's Bill Astor on the property. Mm -hmm. Peter is the one that rents. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're telling me that this should be allowed? This, not this. 
and all that. Peter, I'm all for Peter. I know he should retire. He's a brilliant All I am saying to you is that they're not here for a height restriction or variance. So they have the matter of right. right that this project is going to go up? If we vote on it. They, they, there's you voted on this? No, ma'am, we have to vote. When you sit down, we'll, we'll be voting on, on, on this project. I could see that, but I, I, I'm upset about it. I think you. I feel you terrible. That there's a, but there's, we're not voting on height. Thank you. I feel very bad, but with, there's no reason for us to vote on height. They have a matter of right to build it. And height as far that they as want. other reasons, I've never been told only one, and they gave me the wrong address, and I called Mr. What's his name, Lara. He goes, oh, no, he says, that's not where it is. It's across the street from you. And I went, and his attorney showed me all this, and I told him I was against it. Not for Peter. Peter doesn't own that property. No. No. Bill Ash, and he's a powerful man. I've been around a long time. I know this. So I'll fight it. I'll do something. Okay. Thank you for Well, thank you for coming up. Are there any other opponents? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. No members wish to speak, I would ask, with all the conditions that we put forth, as well as the parking restriction, please. Following conditions offered by the ZBA are as follows. One, if the rights authorized by this variance are not exercised within one year of the date of the grant of the variance, the rights shall lapse. Two, this variance shall not be valid until the appellant has recorded this variance and plan in the Suffolk County Registry of Deeds and submits document recording numbers and dates to the city clerk and building inspector of the city of Revere. Three, the appellant must receive site plan review approval prior to applying for a building permit. And four, the property shall not be eligible for participation in the city of Revere's residential and visitor on street permit parking program. Shall the Zoning Board of Appeals grant the relief requested subject to those conditions? Mr. Lemina? Yes, Mr. Lopes? Yes, Mr. O'Brien? Yes, Mr. Pelton? Yes, and Chairman Tucker? Yes. Yes, the variance has been granted. Next application is A2318, Revere Residential LLC, 95 Beacon Street, Boston, Mass requesting multiple variances to enable the appellant to construct a seven-story mixed-use building on 49 through 64 Revere Beach Boulevard. Before we start this next um, meeting, if anyone wishes to discuss this with developers or anything, please take it out in the hallway because the acoustics here are very bad. So I would ask if you want to discuss anything, please take it into the hallway where it doesn't interfere with the meeting. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Councillor. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Chairman Tucker and members of the ZBA. My name is Attorney Jerry D'Ambrosio. I do realize I am the last one on the agenda, so I will try to keep my comments brief. Uh, as you all know, my office in Revere is located at 14 Proctor Avenue. Uh, here today, I represent the applicant of Revere Residential LLC. Along with me is Greg Feldman of Feldco, the developer of the project. He sits to my right, has just raised his hand. Also with me is Michael LeBlanc of UTL Design, uh, the chief architect. And earlier tonight, uh, Kathy Cruz was here from Hancock Associates, and they're here for questions only. The petition before you is for the creation of 139 luxury unit condominiums to be built at 49-64 Revere Beach Boulevard. Quickly, I'd like to just focus on that site. It is an RC2 district, the RC2 district. Uh, this use is a use that is a matter of right in that district. Uh, it's important to note that the parcel before you is 34,000 square feet. Uh, it includes the former Shipwreck Lounge, the former Castle Del Mar Hotel, the current Sammy's Patio, and the current Nick's uh, Pizza Shop. Uh, this rendition to my right gives you an idea of what that looks like now with uh, the Knicks here, Sam's patio, and then there's a great big 
hole in the ground to the left. The, the reason that hole in the ground currently exists is that this ZBA already gave approval for the development of this site prior to COVID. You may recall it was a developer from New York and Hong Kong. There was a proposal to build a hotel there, uh, a bit of a far-fetched proposal, I may suggest. It didn't go very far, and then when COVID hit, uh, it totally submerged the entire project. Uh, unfortunately, there had uh, been some construction on the site. It's quite an ugly spot right now in need of redevelopment. It's, I'd suggest, a bit of a hazard that's there now. Our client, Feldco, has been working with uh, the City of Revere for the past year, to be quite frank. When they first came to the City of Revere, uh, the city had asked them to not simply redevelop the hole that was in the ground, but to actually reach out to Sammy's patio and next to see if they could expand it uh, to make this a larger project. And that's, what it, uh, that's exactly what Greg Feldman did. He took quite a bit of time, negotiated the other purchase and sales, and expanded the site to make a better project. That was done at the request of the city of Revere. Uh, that's why it took almost a year to get here, uh, gentlemen. But it's important to note that this is an important parcel because it is a, it is a key component to redeveloping that side of the beach. Um, it's, it's an area that needs redevelopment. Uh, there was some crime there this weekend, I think, that everybody heard about. I think it's projects like this that are re going to redevelop that whole area that's going to clean it up and make it a better spot and reduce that kind of criminal activity uh, in, in the long run. Um, when, when talking about this redevelopment, I also want to point out that uh, not only does City Hall support it, there's been a letter submitted by... Uh, the acting mayor and his representatives, and that's part of the package, so they support it. Ward Councilor uh, 1, Joanne McKenna, affirmatively supports this project as well, and uh, so doesn't Ward, uh, Ward Councilor Aaron Novoselsky, who abuts it. He was here earlier, had to leave to go to a wake. Uh, he also supports it, and I put that on the, uh, on the public record. With regard to the project itself, I'll quickly breeze through it. I know the proposal is before you and you have all the records. It's a seven-story structure, approximately 166,000 square feet. Uh, it is for 139 luxury condominium units. Of the 139 units, 77 are two bedrooms, 57 are one bedrooms, and five are studios. There are no three-bedroom units, uh, uh, hence minimizing the impact on the school district. Again, they're designed to really take advantage of uh, uh, the train station behind them. It's only a four minute walk by Google from uh, this lot to the train station. Uh, but regardless of that, there's going to be 139 parking spots. So there will be 139 parking spots at a ratio of one to one, which has been fairly consistent with everything that's been on the beach. And just as importantly, on the first floor, the developer plants two commercial spots, two commercial units. Uh, we know for sure one is gonna be a restaurant, more than likely, both will be restaurants, but at the very least, one will be a food establishment and the other some kind of other establishment. Likely, a, likely a, uh, another restaurant, but potentially a store as well, some kind of variety store to service uh, the neighborhood. Uh, and that's about 6,000 square feet on the first floor. Uh, important to note that the parking is going to be the first two floors, one subgrade parking floor and then one at-grade uh, parking floor as well. Um, I don't want to really get into the dimensions. I, no, I, no, I, because we have to leave here at 6.30. I don't, but, I, but I do want to show you what the, uh, what the building's going to look like. Uh, thank you. It is, uh, it is actually a, uh, it is a uh, beaut beautiful structure. Uh, again, state-of-the-art, uh, a sustainable structure, s seven stories. It's going to have a wave exterior, so it's not just going to be a box. It's going to be a wave facade. Uh, we're also going to comply with the Revere, Review, uh, Re Revere Beach Review Design Board to get input from them. But this is going to be a beautiful structure that's going to really light up the center of the, uh, uh, the beach and, again, uh, continue on with the revitalization of Revere Beach. That being said, we're here. We'd accept any questions. If there are any, if not, we'd ask for a vote. Thank you. Any proponents? Anyone else wish to speak? We do have a letter on file. Yeah, so. from Tom Skrowski, Chief of Planning, and Robert O'Brien, Director of Economic Development from the City of Riviera, in favor as well. Okay. If you, please do state your name and address for the record. Nope. It was on. Good. 
Hello, my name is uh, Joseph Carrigal. Um, I represent with my son the uh, 39 condominiums next door, 41 to 45 of Bear Beach Boulevard. Um, we've been patiently waiting uh, for somebody to develop the uh, property from the disaster that was previously there. There were um, commitments and um, things made to us previously that didn't fall through, that didn't come through. Um, we had to go into litigation and so forth, and we've just met the developer out in the hallway, and we seem to have some cord with him that we feel comfortable that we can work together with him um, to beautify Revere Beach and enhance the area, which would also enhance my uh, property there. So we look forward to it, hope, um, develop, being developed for the betterment of Revere entirely, but more importantly, for the Revere Beach area. Thank That's you good to hear. for your time. Thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Anyone opposed? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close that side of the hearing. The park that's, if the council could get up. The park is a public park that's next to it. Is that DCR or the city? The that's DCR. That's DCR. So it's Do you plan park. on doing any enhancements to that, or what's the... So, the so, so currently we're, we're in the process of negotiating with DCR on some outstanding issues. And uh, uh, we're, we're not quite sure what they're going to ask. Um, okay. We do know that DCI has... But it's not a, something that's not on the table. I just wanted no, to make sure not. it was on the They've table. They've actually budgeted some money to do it. That's why they may ask us to yep. do something different. So we're, it's up in the air right now. But it is on... Uh, we do know it's on the DCR agenda that that park is going to be rehabbed. That's why I just questioned that you, you, you're in discussion, so it's not something that's going to hold up it's the, this project Should or not. anything. No. Okay. Any members? Then I would ask for a, a, the standard of conditions we will put on there with the restrictions of the, as well as the no visitors parking for the city. If you could read them in. Standard conditions of the ZBA are as follows. One, if the rights authorized by this variance are not exercised within one year of the date of the grant of this variance, the right shall lapse. Two, this variance shall not be valid until the appellant has recorded this variance and plan the Suffolk County Registry of Deeds and submits document recording numbers and dates to the City Clerk and Building Inspector of the City of Revere. Three, the appellant must receive site plan review approval pr prior to applying for a building permit. And four, the property shall not be eligible for participation in the City of Revere's residential and visitor on-street permit parking program. I'm going to ask a question, and I'm not even sure if it's a matter or if it's relevant, but... If, where this is condominium, could we put that if they wish to change this from condominium that they have to come back in front of us, or is that something they can't do? I don't believe we can do it, but I, I just thought I'd to, ask. I would have to defer to the city solicitor for that. Okay. I don't think yeah. we can, but all right. No. I just told you in good faith that keeping this as condominium. Uh, the goal public. is to go forward with condominiums. Okay. I just wanted to make that public. Okay. As for roll call, please. Shall the Zoning Board of Appeals grant the relief requested subject to those conditions? Mr. Lemina? Yes. Yes, Mr. Lopes? Yes. Yes, Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Yes, Mr. Pelton? Yes. Yes, and Chairman Tucker? Yes. Yes, the variances have been granted. Thank you. I'd like a point of personal privilege, if, I, if you don't mind. Um, I'd like to wish um, good health to Councillor Powers, who could not be here this evening. He is not feeling well. Um, and then uh, I'd like to also um, wish my best to Arthur and Linda Ganasso for the loss of their son, which is the wake is tonight, this evening. Um, so hopefully we can adjourn and get to the wake. Thank you. January, June 28th at 